The time has come to publish an update on everything related to AMD Radeon Navi 31 GPU, which will be used in RX 7900 XT graphics card. That includes its specs, release date, price, and of course performance. Additionally, I will compare RX 7900 XT to the current generation AMD RX 6900 XT and NVIDIA RTX 3090 graphics cards as well as the upcoming RTX 1490, so that we can better understand what AMD has done in terms of chip design to reach yet another groundbreaking performance target it has set for the next generation of its GPUs based on RDNA 3 microarchitecture. After all, they do want to start taking market share from Nvidia this year, and it does look like AMD may be able to pull it off. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Buy your Windows 10 or 11 key for less from cdkeyoffer.com at the link in the description below. Use code IV20 to get a 25% discount that brings the price down to as low as $16. You can securely check out with PayPal and receive your Windows key in minutes, ready to be activated on your PC. Now back to the video. AMD is not as cash-rich as Nvidia, so the GPU development team has to be extra creative when it comes to designing and manufacturing. That is why AMD is super focused on improving cost-effectiveness as well as performance at the same time by a lot. The company has managed to master this game in the CPU space by developing the chiplet technology which helped AMD to make better processors than Intel and claim a lot of market share in both consumer PC and data center. Now, with the upcoming RX 7000 series graphics cards, AMD is bringing the chiplet technology to the GPU space. It will look something like this. A compute die packaged together with a bunch of smaller dies housing the Infinity Cache and memory controllers to make a single GPU while keeping the production costs low. FYI, Nvidia is still doing things the old-fashioned way, with monolithic chip designs which are bigger and more expensive to manufacture when it comes to the high-end graphics cards like RTX 3090 and 4090, where GPU chips have to be very large. By the way, AMD can use this technology to bring back multi-GPU graphics cards that are actually perceived by the system as a single GPU, with all the benefits of near-perfect performance scaling in games. That would be an amazing replacement to the now-retired SLI and Crossfire multi-GPU technologies that failed to achieve this goal. AMD already has such multi-GPU products. I'm talking about the MI200 series GPUs for HPC and data center. It is only a matter of time before this technology trickles down to consumer-grade graphics cards for gaming PCs. On the downside, most likely it will come at a cost of increased power consumption that could reach 5 to 600 watts or more. I will not be surprised if we see such a product launch as a part of RX 8000 series lineup. Let's get back to Navi 31 GPU. It is rumored that AMD will reveal it as early as November this year. I expect to see this GPU in RX 7900 XT graphics card, although I am not sure if 7900 XT will use the full Navi 31 configuration or a cut-down version of it. But what I do know is that the full Navi 31 GPU consists of one compute die manufactured on TSMC and 5 node and six additional TSMC and 6 dies, which house Infinity Cache and memory controllers. It features 12,288 shader cores, which is a lot compared to the current AMD flagship RX 6900 XT with just 5,120 cores. However, if we compare it to Nvidia's upcoming RTX 4090 with its 16,384 CUDA cores, then it becomes less impressive, at least on paper. But it does not mean that RX 7900 XT will not be able to compete with RTX 4090. In terms of cache, Navi 31 has two options available to AMD to choose from. The first one with six 16 MB chiplets for a total of 96 MB of Infinity Cache, and the second with additional six 16 MB chiplets 3D stacked on top of the first layer for a total of 192 MB of Infinity Cache. The memory 3D stacking is yet another cutting edge technology that only AMD uses in its CPUs and GPUs right now. 
The first and only product so far to take advantage of it is Ryzen 7 5800X 3D processor. Navi 31 based graphics cards will expand AMD's 3D stacked product line. For comparison, RX 6900 XT has 128 megabytes of cache, while RTX 4090 will have up to 96 megabytes. In terms of memory, RX 7900 XT is rumored to have 24 gigabytes of 20 gigabit per second G6 memory versus 16 gigabytes of 16 gigabit per second G6 on 6900 XT and 24 gigabytes of 21 gigabit per second G6X on RTX 4090. We don't have any confirmations on the power consumption just yet, but I expect it to be 400 to 450 watts. According to the latest leaks, RTX 4090 is rated to 450 watts. Compared to the upcoming flagships, RX 6900 XT has a modest TDP of 300 watts. As for the price, I expect to see RX 7900 XT to be priced between $1200 to $1500. But this is just my educated guess, as we just don't know anything about the price. Most likely AMD has not made a final decision yet. Since RX 7900 XT is rumored to launch in November this year, its final MSRP will be affected by how Nvidia prices RTX 4090, which is rumored to be revealed earlier than 7900 XT in either September or October. Now let's talk about the performance. AMD officially stated that RX 7000 series performance per watt has been improved by more than 50%. But what does this mean for gaming performance on RX 7900 XT, assuming that it will use the full Navi 31 configuration? The latest leaks suggest that 7900 XT is significantly better than 6900 XT in ray tracing and 100 to 120% better in rasterization. I have created some speculative gaming benchmark charts to put into perspective just how much better 7900 XT is shaping up to be compared to other currently available graphics cards in terms of FPS. I decided to use the lower 100% performance increase target for the purpose of this video. Even so, 7900 XT would offer ludicrous performance compared to the current generation of GPUs in games at 4K resolution. One of the most GPU demanding titles, Cyberpunk 2077, should be able to run at 96 FPS average using the high quality preset if the leaked performance target is accurate. Another GPU heavy game, Watch Dogs Legion, could end up offering 116 FPS or higher on average. The less demanding competitive titles, such as Rainbow Six Siege, would have FPS high enough to take advantage of the new 4K 240Hz monitors, as potentially we are looking at over 340 FPS on ultra quality preset. Borderlands 3 is a good example of how an average AAA game runs 138 FPS on ultra quality in 4K. Older but still very modern looking AAA games will be a pleasure to play at 4K on such a powerful GPU. We could see over 170 FPS average in Shadow of the Tomb Raider using the highest quality preset. And over 160 FPS in Horizon Zero Dawn on ultimate quality. Could RX 7900 XT be the first new AMD flagship in many years to beat the strongest Nvidia graphics card from the upcoming RTX 4000 series? We should see that in a few months time. It is certainly a possibility. Nvidia knows it and it will do anything to make sure that this does not happen. So expect to see some fierce competition between Nvidia and AMD this year. Well, at least in the high-end segment. The low-end segment will most likely be underserved once again. Do not expect good $200 graphics cards from these companies anytime soon. What do you think about Navi 31 and RX 7900 XT? I am waiting for you in the comments below to discuss it. And if you enjoyed this video, then you know what to do with the like button. It was I, Vadim, until next time.